Hey guys, what's going on? Matt here and welcome to a new series on the Black Ops 3 mod tools which is going to be focused on scripting. So I've already got quite an extensive uh, tutorial sort of series on, uh, on like the more mapping side. We do do a little bit of scripting but I don't actually show you guys how to write scripts uh, at least in really any detail. And this is kind of the intent of why I've kind of started this really. <laughs> Um, so to begin with, this video is going to be an introduction, just to sort of set up your text editor, um, a bit of an overview of what things are, and then in the next video, that's where we'll actually be starting writing code. The intention for this is going to be you hopefully can watch this without any coding experience, um, and be able to create some pretty cool stuff by you know a fair few videos in. Um, each video though will be building upon the last one, so everything, let's like say in episode, uh, well, video number like four, um, we'll probably be using some, something from the previous ones. So if you are new to this, it's probably worth watching these in order. Um, obviously with this one kind of being the intro, as I say. So let's get, start, let's get started. So the text editor that I use is called Sublime Text. Um, I would recommend this just because we were able to sort of view things a bit better uh, in this and I'll explain why in a moment. Um, if you are using anything else, that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, kind of just use, use whatever you think is best for you. So Sublime Text, um, I'll leave a link in the description and that is going to go to their website where you can download it from. Um, I've been using this for years. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna open up a script file really quick, just a random one from the Black Ops uh, 3 root. Uh, it can be literally be anything, open up this one. Cool. So as you can see, everything kind of looks the same in here. Everything's the same color. It's pretty difficult to read, I think. Um, it's really not very nice to look at, to be honest with you, it's quite difficult. So to make this a bit better, within the Black Ops 3 mod tools, if we go over to docs mod tools, we have this GSC underscore sublime. And if we open up this, what we've got, obviously you know, this comes with the tools. So if you have downloaded Sublime, what we can do is we can go over to Preferences, Browse Packages, open up TypeScript, and all we're gonna do is drag and drop those things into there. I'm really quickly just gonna restart Sublime. So just close it down, go back to where that script was that I was just using. And you'll see things look a bit different. So earlier when I said it's quite difficult to read, but well, you know, there's something we can use. This is basically it. So if you use Sublime, the mod tools comes with, um, comes with that, um, that RAR file, which allows you to basically color coordinate, I guess, um, your code. Um, it's basically just syntax highlighting. So things are a lot easier to read, but what's nice as well, if you're, if you're typing something out and you're not exactly too sure what something's called, uh, for example, this uh, this get dvar string. If we wanted to use that, but we wasn't exactly sure what it was called, you can start typing, and it'll kind of give you some suggestions. So if I just start here, so get, you see there, get dvar string. We can just use that. So that's really helpful for if you kind of know what kind of know what you want to be doing, but you're not as entirely too sure what it's called. So that's really useful, but. That's kind of just to start with there. So I'm just going to open up a couple more files just so I can explain what they are. So there's typically three main, well, I'm pretty sure for the most part, there's only these three um, script files. We've got our .gsc, uh, we've got our csc, and we've got our .gsh. You can see here by the, uh, the file extension. So GSC is typically what uh, we'll be working in mostly, uh, and that is your server-side code. So everything that lives on the server. Uh, we have the CSC, which is your client-side um, sort of code. And we have GSH, which is often used for things like settings and text. So um, if, you, if you're using text in your script, you know, you want something to pop, pop up on screen or maybe, you know, display to the player, you know, press X on this for something. Um, that's typically put into here just so we can predefine it. You 
may be familiar with the power lag that some maps have. Uh, so, you know, when you turn on the power, you know, your map kind of drops a bunch of frames, feels like it's lagging, and then it's fine after a few moments. Um, that is often because people don't pre-cache. Uh, so basically people don't predefine um, text and then pre-cache that text. Of course, within this, we'll be at least doing, doing our best to kind of do things the right way. Uh, and what you really should be doing is pre-caching things like that. So when it loads in, you don't have that sort of that lag, if you will. Um, it typically works on the power because uh, custom perks and stuff like that um, haven't had that um, pre-cached. So it's trying to load in all the text for that. Um, and a bunch of other things can cause it, but that's typically the, the most common cause, I guess. So that's what this is used for. And it's also used for settings. So if... Um, you know, maybe you're making a, a teleporter, let's say, and you want it to have like a cooldown timer on it. Uh, you can define how long that timer is in here. You can do it within your script. So, you know, if you're doing it in, in your GSC, you can certainly put it in here. But if you want to kind of take things out and almost have like a bit of a settings file for it, that's what I've started to do a bit more now. Uh, that's, a, that's exactly where you, where you want to be doing that. So that's kind of the three, uh, you know, overview. Three sort of main ones with a bit of a, uh, an overview of them. Um, and that's kind of it really for, for the script side. Um, when I am making these scripts, um, things may go wrong, you know, things may not work as intended. It's probably quite likely, especially as we you know, if we, you know, as we're doing more complicated things, uh, but don't worry, I'm going to be keeping all that in the video. So if something does go wrong, you guys will kind of see how I approach, um, trying to figure out how to fix it. Cause I think that's also quite important as well. Um, but hopefully that won't be the case in the earlier ones. Hopefully that'll only be, you know, once things get a little bit more complicated, uh, I'll be doing things wrong, hopefully. So that's that. Next thing I wanted to kind of just uh, go over fairly quickly is uh, in Radiant. So the way we actually kind of interact with things um, in the actual map. Now, if I just drag and drop, I'll just get a random model. Stick a cinder block into the map, there we go. Over in over in our entity info, so you can just right right, right click up here and go to entity info to get this. Um, this object right now, this model, uh, you can't really do much with uh, within script. So what we tend to do is we use something called a script model. So I've actually already got it in there, which is nice. So script model, just remap that. And what this means is now this is now uh, we can basically interact with this within a script. Uh, you can also have script brush model, um, which is like a wall, for example. Uh, you know, if you're doing like a sliding wall, you'll have probably um, seen script, br script brush model before. Um, things like viable debris, uh, typically, well, typically they, they use a script models. So you will have probably came across these a bit if you've done, you know, a bit of other stuff before. Um, but the important part to focus on here though is KVPs. Now what KVP is, is key value pair. That's all that is. And we have here, for example, target name. So the, the key is target name and the value is, well, whatever we put in here. So you see we have a bunch of these already predefined for us. But let's say, you know, let's say you're setting up a script and you wanted to move this cinder block. We won't actually be doing that, but just for example, that is, let's just put, um, just put a test in there. I can't think of one. So put a test in there. We can now refer to the cinder block uh, in our script as test. So we can look for this. Um, and that is kind of what KVPs are used for. Now, of course, you don't have to just use them for identifying things. That's what the target name is for. Uh, maybe you wanted to have a fan that spins on the wall. Um, and you know you don't want to have to maybe go and edit the script because maybe you might be using that script for multiple fans around the map but you know maybe you want two fans you know to sort of spin at maybe like a different speed you can pass through um, values in here for your script to use so for example you know if i am having you know rotating objects um, i might put in uh, let's say a script noteworthy so there are some like predefined ones, you know, that you kind of have to use, uh, but we'll be going to go over that in more detail. So let's say I had script note, uh, script noteworthy. Uh, and we'll just put that as, I don't know, 50 or something, to ran random number. So what, what this could, what this could be is we have, um, you know, imagine this as like a fan, maybe like, like the fan blades. 
we can go, okay, so for every fan blade that we have, we're going to rotate that at, at a certain speed. And this is where I can specify my speed, let's say. So it's going to rotate at a speed of 50. And I don't know what that would be in the script, but we could rotate at a speed of 50. Maybe another one is a, is a speed of maybe 100, you know. So one's going to spin at double the speed as the other one. So it's really useful for things like that. So you can be passing values to your script without having a script for every single individual thing, um, which is, you know, a whole lot better. So that's kind of a bit of an overview on KVPs. Um, obviously, that was just an example, you know, <laughs> You know, you, you might not want to use script noteworthy for this. It's probably a bad, a bad example for that, but that's kind of the, you know, the general idea of it. Um, just because some things are typically used for, you know, certain things as well. Uh, so that's that. Um, and I think that's kind of, kind of it really for the overview. Um, next video, we'll be starting the actual code. And of course, any questions you have um, already, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll try and sort of do my best to answer them there. But of course, anything actual code related, it's probably probably best to just wait until the videos actually come out and we can kind of get a few, you know, more easier uh, examples to kind of go over. Um, and yeah, but yeah, hopefully people that I know can start from can start from here and then in a few videos time, they'll, uh, they'll ho hopefully be able to be making some decent, uh, decent features for the maps. So thanks for watching this um, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.